In this video, I attempt to be Pokemon Vintage White as a hardcore Nuzlocke, but harder than the last time I played. If you guys don't know what Vintage White is, it's basically a ROM hack of Pokemon White that makes everything much more difficult. I'll be playing the most recent version of this game, which means that all weather has been nerfed, so as a player, you have very limited control of the weather, setup moves and gimmicky moves like Substitute and Encore, those all have their PPs reduced, and the broken mechanic of gems in Gen 5 has also been removed. Of course, we'll be using hardcore Nuzlocke rules, and we'll be playing with all the changes that the game provides. Harder trainer teams, updated Pokemon, and much more to explore, just like Skillshare. That's right, this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of online classes and members across 150 countries. These classes can teach you a bunch of creative skills like video editing, graphic design, and even painting. So my neighbor is a student like me, but she also loves growing her own plants. She's very kind, and she's a very sweet girl, so I thought, why don't I get her a plant as a gift? Of course, before choosing which plant to give her, I did a little exploration on my own on indoor gardening. The best thing about these classes is that you're able to learn in whatever style or pace feels comfortable. Me myself, I just like to get to the point, so with Skillshare's ad-free viewing, I was able to pick up indoor gardening relatively quickly. There's new premium classes launched every week, so the first 1,000 people to use the link in my description will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare. Again, if you want to explore your creativity for free, the first 1,000 people to use the link in my description will get one free month of Skillshare's premium membership. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Also, before we start, please subscribe guys, that would be greatly appreciated. Now back to Vintage White. Seeing as how I have played this game before, I do have an idea of what to expect when playing this game. Since this game doesn't offer any Gen 5 Pokemon, the starters for this game are Trico, Mudkip, and Torchic. I decided to choose Mudkip for this first attempt. Based on my previous experiences with Swampert and playing with Gen 3 starters, I know that Swampert is a massive asset. One weakness, super bulky, super powerful, Swampert can never go wrong. Although Swampert in this game is mainly used for Swift Swim, I know that some battles and trainers do have Rain on their field, so Swampert can still be very useful. Now one change in this game that wasn't there previously is that there is now an NPC who gives you a Fire, Water, or Grass Pokemon who is weak to your starter. That way, when you go into the first gym, you'll have a Pokemon that's good against the main typing of your opponent. This makes the first gym very, very free. Because I started with Mudkip, the gym leader now uses Grass types. Since we get a Pokemon that's weak against our starter, we now have a Pokemon that can easily take on the gym leader. Flame Wheel takes out the Shroomish and the Trico, as Ekans takes out the Tangela, earning us the first badge. The second gym leader also wasn't too bad. Ekans evolved into an Arbok that's a Poison Dragon type with Intimidate, a crazy combination. I also call myself an Onyx, a Defensive Specialist, and a Technician Hitmontop that can deal super amounts of damage. The beast of the team is probably the Water Steel type Kingler. Nothing can really get past him. The battle starts with Hitmontop versus Lickitung. Low Sweep starts off doing a lot of damage as Lickitung goes for a weak Psychic. Next turn, Lickitung is taken out by another low sweep. She sends in Girafferig as I make the switch into Kingler. Psychic doesn't really do a lot of damage, but Iron Head really hurts the Girafferig. A second Iron Head is all it takes to take him out after taking a Brick Break. Zatu comes in on the Vigoroth and easily finishes him with Psybeam. This leaves Lenora with just 3 Pokemon left. Persian comes in trying to get off a super effective bite, but thankfully, Rock Smash is the boosted move to 70 base power. Kecleon sees a Brick Break kill, but the Arbok switch into Intimidate, lowering its attack is too good. In this game, Kecleon has the added Ghost type, so super effective crunches are able to take him out. Unfortunately, he gets the lucky critical and takes out Arbok, a key member up to this point. Thankfully, remembering to keep Foresight on Hitmontop was key to this battle. Fighting type moves now hit, and a low sweep takes out Kecleon. This just leaves her final ace Pokemon slacking. Slacking is a beast, but with slow start, we got 5 free turns to get it killed. Unfortunately, 5 free turns wasn't enough and Hitmontop had to go down. The damage output on this guy was just simply not enough. But with the help of Confusion Self Hit and Air Cutter Crits, we were finally able to take him out. This got us our second badge, but with two deaths as well. This fight was definitely not well played. The way to get to Castelia City was pretty straightforward, so before you know it, we were already at the third gym. The team was looking pretty nice as well. Onyx evolved into a Steelix, and we got ourselves a Sea King with Swift Swim. Unfortunately, the Armaldo we got was not that great. It's a Swift Swim Armaldo with a minus attack nature. However, the Armaldo is still an Armaldo, which is still a great Pokemon. The Berg fight is a double battle, which can be quite tricky to navigate, so here's how it went. Our plan basically revolves around Volbeat using Rain Dance. Not getting battle armor on Armaldo and having Swift Swim instead is actually a good thing. Why do you have 5 PP? We're gonna do this to the Volbeat, and we're gonna do Rock Slide. Perfect. Perfect.
Psychic is fine. I will take... Oh, God. That's a lot of damage. Hold on. Nice. This thing might protect first turn, but it can also just as easily go for, like, a Giga Drain. Aqua Jet Illumise, and then Rock Slide. That's what I thought. You know what the funny thing is? We're actually faster than us Yen Mega because we have Swift Swim. Our, our model probably one-shots the Yen Mega. That's Waterfall, Dust Tox. Let's do this. I'm pretty sure we are faster. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. Do we one-shot, though? Nice. And then we can definitely take a, an Electro Web. Scizor now. The Scizor can't really do anything to uh, Sea King. Aqua Jet here. Protect, maybe? Swap here. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Can we walls hair cross? Kinda. I think it's a switch now. I don't feel confident having seeking here. The damage output of hair cross is simply too high, and that, that I cannot risk not killing with pluck. Oh. Whoa! Oh my god! Dude, I was confident he was gonna bullet seed into the left side. I was confident in that. Okay. I just completely forgot it had bullet punch. I was so... Oh my... Actually, you know what? I'm not too sad because that wasn't really the best Armaldo. So I'm not too sad. Did not cross my mind. It was using Slash the entire time and I was like, Oh yeah, we take a Slash. Oh man. Did not bother to think about it. Losing Armaldo, I'm not too bummed out about, but losing Kingler, I, that's unfortunate. That was a second horrible gym battle. In fact, the horrible gym battle streak actually continues all the way till Elisa. I lose Rapidash to a rival battle in between the two gyms, and I lose a second Pokemon to a drill running Rapidash right as I enter Nimbasa City. I lost both of them to critical hits. The crit rate in this game, I swear, is so high it should be renamed to Critage White. Now the end fight before Elisa went pretty well, Aqua Tail takes out the Tyranitar and the Steelix, as Air Slash takes out Cacturn. Sand Slash lives in Air Slash, but dies to the next Aqua Tail. This was a pretty good fight to give me confidence, but we can't just forget the fact that I'm bleeding Pokemon. With so few Pokemon to work with, this fight didn't really go as planned. It's again another doubles battle, which is extremely hard to navigate, especially against super offensive Pokemon like Electric types. I double protected first turn to give Blaziken the speed boost, and went for an alternating dig strategy so that the opponents could always miss my Pokemon. Dig from Swamper barely doesn't take out the Plusle, but at least an Aqua Tail next turn does finish him off. Minin hits me with a Scald and actually manages to burn me. This game is rigged, I swear to god, but thankfully Blazingkin comes up next turn and takes him out with Dig. Now if you thought those two were problematic, the next two are even worse. The Pidgeot is an electric flying type with no guard and focus blast and thunder and hurricane. This is the ace of her team and this is the hardest Pokemon to counter. Her Electrode is not any better, it somehow has coverage moves against every single Pokemon that exists, plus some others from Digimon. It's so fast, and it does so much damage, and I just need one on my team. I tried countering with Claydol, but Pidgeot's Hurricane does way too much damage. 
Thankfully, Dagon Electrode brings it down to Focus Sash range, so an Aqua Jet next turn can take him out. Claydol's way too weak at this point, so I had to switch him out for Steelix. Aqua Jet from Swampert is able to take out the Electrode, as Steelix tanks another Hurricane. Unfortunately, our Pokemon do eventually go down. Steelix dies to an Aura Sphere, another critical Aura Sphere takes out Kabutops, and Blaziken dies like this. What? Yeah, apparently no guard allows you to do that. Eventually, the rest of my team does go down, both Swampert and Tropius. Whenever you lose a run like this, it's important to have learned something from your run. So, for the next couple of attempts, I decide to use the Firestarter Torchic. Up until now, I've been so hung up on what used to work, what used to be good. Swampert was good with Swift Swim until the rain got taken away. Just as how the game has gone through a bunch of changes, it's important that I'm able to change as well. And for that reason, I can't keep relying on my old information. I need to be able to adapt. Now this process did take quite a while. Attempts 2-4 to four all wiped super early on, maybe around the second gym leader, so it didn't really go that far. But, attempt 6 was the run. Only after another 5 attempts was I able to get the perfect combination of good encounters and playing the game right. The Elisa fight this time went much better. Plusle didn't go for a Rain Dance first turn, and Earth Power from Nidoking was able to take out the Minin. Plusle tried to use Helping Hand to boost the Electrode's damage, but Nidoking protects, blocking the Earth Power. This gives Glyscore free reign to Earthquake the field, taking out the Plusle and bringing the Electrode down to 1 HP. With Pidgeot in, I swap out Nidoking for Swellow and hit the Pidgeot with a Rock-type Strength, taking it out. With half her team left, I swap in Jolteon to take the Thunderbolt, and then Strength takes out the Electrode. Manectric does drop Glyscore's attack, but not by enough because he still dies to an Earthquake. This leaves her left with one more Pokemon that we can easily take out with some chip damage. A much cleaner fight earns us the fourth badge. The route to Clay was pretty straightforward. There's a single battle rival fight with Charon that you can easily counter at this point. But more importantly, it gets us a bunch of encounters. We catch a Swellblue on the bridge as well as a Horsey from fishing. After clearing out Cold Storage, we can finally make our way to the fifth gym. Now in my opinion, Clay is probably one of the hardest run killers in this game. You have to fight him in a permanent sandstorm gym, which means that his team always has the boost. And I don't care what you say, no other weather condition is more annoying than sandstorm. The fight begins with Tyranitar vs Swellow. Swellow here is pre-damage to bait a Thunder Punch into us. This way on the switch, Blaziken won't be taking a rock move. Unfortunately, I forgot to equip Swellow with a Charty Berry, so we could have easily just lost Blaziken right here. Thankfully, he doesn't crit us and we're able to take him out with a Sky Uppercut. Dugtrio is sent in, who has Arena Trap to prevent the switch, but Blaziken has Speed Boost, boosting our speed to be faster than Dugtrio. This way, a single Sky Uppercut easily takes him out, giving us no problem. Agron, however, can be a little problematic because it has a Focus Sash to keep him alive. It's Head Smash, right? Yeah, that's what I thought. And it doesn't take Recoil? Doesn't break its Sash then. Was that one of the two rolls? Yeah, it was. Venusaur was good too. Yeah, that's such a shame. Armaldo. Nice, okay. It's gonna go Woodhammer now. I feel like we can go Swellow here. Why would you have Smash? Alright, whatever. I think Goliath takes a Rock Wrecker. Non-crit, obviously. Horus, why not? You know what? You know what? Six deaths at this point is not bad. 
Six deaths past Clay is actually really, really good. I should be giving myself more credit, but I'm still so salty at the way Venusaur died. Two crits to take out two Pokemon is just really annoying. But with that done, there's a rival fight, an end fight, and then the leader Skyla. Bianca wasn't too bad. She fights in a single battle, which isn't too difficult. And honestly, after fighting Clay, I don't think there's any single battle that's going to be more difficult. In Charge Zone Cave, we catch another very crucial encounter. If you guys don't know, flying types are very easy to counter if you use a very aggressive and fast Pokemon. And thus, the addition of Pidgeot onto our team is perfect. It's fast, it's offensive, and it has no guard for always hit thunders. The upcoming end fight in Charge Zone Cave, it's a much more difficult single battle. And all other single battles should be like this one. Simple battle, easy battle. The way it works is we are just gonna 1v1 all of his Pokemon. Which in one, send in the next, easy peasy. Close combat, choice band, easy kill. We took that into account. Perfect. Oh shit, Pidgeot now? Most likely Hurricane? Okay, that's good. Uh, we're Choice Scarfed, so we always outspeed. And Strength should always kill. Battle Armor so it never crits. Perfect. Nice. Uh, let's Earth Power. Over half is best. Okay, that's good. Uh, we live this. We live this. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Citrus Berry brings us out of uh, Bullet Punch crit range. So now we can kill this. Oh fuck, don't para. Yeah, crit would have killed us there. Don't para. Wait, no. It's, your turn's already over. Nice. And we have to switch you out now. Fucking knock off, man. I got way too close. Skyla in this game is a triple battle, so if you thought the Elisa double fight was hard, then this is much more difficult. Thankfully, as a gym leader, Skyla actually isn't that hard. Her Pokemon aren't too good, and you probably have a bunch of Pokemon that can counter her Pokemon individually. The tricky part comes when you're trying to decide who comes out when. Since flying types can inherently reach the entire field, you need to be careful to make sure that Skyla isn't able to triple stack you. We're gonna do some impromptu acting, all right, because I have no idea what it's gonna do for that's for the last three Pokemon. Okay. So, Intimidate is fine. We're all special attackers. Um, we're saving Manectric for the back to intimidate whatever Pokemon comes in next, and hopefully we should all kill the first three Pokemon. So, Dodrio minus special defense nature. This kills the Crobat, and Thunder is no guard kills the Gyarados. For Life Orb, this should kill. No Guard Thunder, Walk and Berry, took that into account. Still should kill. Nice. Okay, now the next three Pokemon. Depending on where and who comes out, like who comes out where, it can get quite hairy. Okay. Okay. Okay, so Alakazam is actually Hidden Power Ice, but uh, Hidden Power can't reach the Gliscor. <laughs> we do have Omastar in the back to Aurora Beam the Gliscor, which means we're going to be protecting the Jolteon in case it goes for Earthquake, which also means we have to send in a Pokemon that can take a Head Smash from the Aerodactyl. 
goodness me, this, uh, this, it's a lot to take in. Manectric for Intimidate. You're going to be protecting. And then we swap you for... Omastar? No. I think I'll, sw I'll swap for here. Omastar actually doesn't tank. Intimidate's good. Okay. Just do not head smash my main trick. Do not head smash main trick. Aerodactyl. Okay. That's. Uh, that's okay. We're Shuka Berry. So we're Shuka on main trick. That's okay. Oh my god, are you serious? Holy sh nap. Ravebird? Fuck. I think you're dead. Oh, what? Okay. Tank, tank? Perfect. Oh my god, this is so scary. Protect this turn because we want to kill the Air Swellow and Aerodactyl on offset turns. I think they all see kills into. Or I think the Swellow and Aerodactyl both see kills into Manectric, so Manectric will protect. Uh, Thunderbolt Bolt will kill the Aerodactyl. And we can Scald here on the Glide Score. Okay, attack, attack Manectric, please. Attack Manectric, please. This should die. Fuck, are you serious? Oh my god. I forgot that flying moves go all the way across the field. And now this is going to do more damage because it's single target. Fuck, I should have protected Blastoise. But if it was gonna Earthquake uh, Jolteon anyway, then it doesn't really matter. I guess I just lost Blastoise for no, for no reason then. Okay, we can't protect again, but I think this switch is fine. If Aurora Beam, the Swellow, and protect this side. Because if we if we used uh, Alakazam to attack the Gliscor, Swellow would be faster than us, and a Facade or a Brave Bird would kill uh, Alakazam. That, that, there, I just, like, I literally predicted it. It literally went for a Brave Bird into Alakazam. God. Are you- okay, burn will kill. Burn will kill. That's fine. That's okay, cannot crit. What a f***ing disaster, man. I was so worried about the facade from uh, Swellow that I completely forgot about Brave Bird reaching the entire field. Jolteon, I'm, I'm okay with losing. We can always get more uh, fast Pokemon, but that Regenerator Water Dragon Blastoise, that's irreplaceable. I'll be careful to jump off right here because Pichal wiped to this trainer uh, today. The next Charon fight is who I would call the gatekeeper to the endgame. After you beat him, you get the Surf TM, which unlocks a huge part of the map. This will allow us to get many more encounters, but first we do have to beat him. We have to fight him in a rain setting, and after losing Blastoise, I simply didn't have enough water types to capitalize on this. This makes for an extremely interesting fight. Intimidate, does not matter, we are going to be sheer force earth powering. Perfect. Aqua Tail most damage, of course. Perfect, right? Because now you just perfectly died a uh, counter. Yeah, easy. Oh. <laughs> oh. He really went for it. Perfect. Intimidate in, lowers attack, we take the Meteor Mash.
That's a good amount of Volt Switch damage. God damn. Okay. Easy win. Easy win. Uh, we're Yachi Berry. Let's just, uh, Leech Seed this thing. Predicted Body Slam. Alright, this is gonna take a while. This is gonna take a while. Nice and easy. With Charon defeated, there's eight more new encounters to get before we can enter the next gym. All right, let's take a look. Plus speed Milo, that's really nice. Adaptability, I'm pretty sure that turns into filter. Plus speed Swift Swim Ludicolo, minus special defense. I don't, yeah, and I don't think this is actually good because minus special defense Ludicolo, he kind of needs that defense. Okay, Levitate Magneton, plus speed 2. I might keep it as a, uh, as a Magneton. Give it Eviolite. Naughty Noctowl, Compound Eyes, of course. Compound Eyes is good, but I don't really see myself using this thing. Neutral, Larvitar, which is really nice. Although its IVs are garbage. <laughs> its IVs suck. <laughs> uh, Shell Armor, this is pretty good. Neutral, that's alright. Uh, not much to say about this one. We got the Bagon. Uh, plus special attack, minus defense. Considering how every Pokemon is extremely buffed, and like, the already good Pokemon didn't get buffs, Salamence is actually not that good. Like, it doesn't really do anything, except for like, exactly sweep Drake. But it's okay, it's okay, it's cool to get. We got the Slowpoke, which is okay. And this, Magikarp. It's got okay attack, but it has no speed. <laughs> so I don't ever see myself using this Magikarp, unfortunately. A little bit nervous. Just slightly nervous. These two hours of prep better have not gone to waste. Alright, so, Snow Warning, Regice, Glaceon. We are going to explode on them. And then what we do from here is going to depend on the next two Pokemon. Because I, apparently I thought the AI was just highest damages come in, but turns out it's not. Okay, Lapras, Walrein, Jinx, okay. So they both see, they definitely both see attacks into Blaziken. We are going to knock off the Jinx, killing it. Psycho Boost is fine. Okay. Having Wall Ring beside Lapras would have been the worst op options. It would have been the worst combination. Okay, what I think I'm gonna do is... I'm gonna knock off the Hobbinberry off of the Lapras, because we need to kill that quickly. And then I'm gonna switch this side for probably Ludi. I'm thinking Ludi. Okay, goodbye Hobbinberry. That's fine. It's also fine. This should kill the Walrein. They can't really do anything to Kingler, so I think you can stay in even until the Frostlass comes out. Beautiful. So, we're going to knock off, protect. I don't know why I have one PP. That's a mistake. Okay, that's fine. 
Okay, they both see ice moves, right? I think it's easy then. We just knock off Kill the Proslas and swap to you. Because Ice Beam into Blizzard will really, really hurt uh, Ludi. And Grass and uh, Giga Drain into Lapras doesn't actually heal me for that much. That's completely fine. Oh, fuck. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Kingler. No. That's so unlucky. That's so unlucky. Ice Beam would have definitely killed Ludi there. Man. Had that Frostlass gone for anything else, we would have won. Oh my god. That's... And there's the win. I thought that Kingler death was pretty funny. Honestly, I'm not too sure why it didn't just go for the Meteor Mash. I guess it's because the Meteor Mash color looks like a normal type move, so I just thought it wouldn't hit the Frostlass. After doing some story stuff, clearing out some fights, beating some grunts, we reach the tube line bridge where there's another rival battle. Hurricane Bayonet, and we will thunder the Frogator. That's fine, we're a special attacker. Half damage is good. Uh, it's gonna try to uh, rock slide us, right? Good damage. Uh, let's go here to specifically bait out the Sceptile Grass uh, Leaf move, uh, Leaf Blade. Because then we can switch into somebody else. Oh, shite. Um, that's scary. So, here's the thing, right? Shadow Force is definitely going into Omastar. I think Omastar can take a Shadow Force, right? So let's take let's swap into someone who can take a Rock Slide. Okay, take the Rock Slide. I really believe Omastar can take a Shadow Force. Holy shit, that's so much Rock Slide damage? Oh my god. Yeah, there's a septile. I think this is a double switch. Um, we need to go into something, probably you, because you can take whatever the bayonet does. And then for you, we're gonna switch into here, because Grass Knot specifically will go into Omastar. Yeah, minus attack is really nice. Okay, we take a leaf blade, easy. Ha okay, critical. Nice. Okay, can we kill them? <laughs> nice. Beautiful. 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 With this Bianca fight done, we finally make it to the Opelousa Gym. And here, I would like to say that everything went smoothly, but a lot happened, so listen up. In this trainer fight, I sent out my Flygon to fight the Ampharos. Ampharos is a dragon electric type in this game, so Flygon would be a perfect counter. I was supposed to give Flygon a choice Band, so that their Earthquake would kill, but instead I gave it choice Specs. This cost me an incredible Pokemon that would have been a great counter to Iris. The second thing that happened was because, well, because all the trainers in this game have been changed and updated, there's a document listing out all the trainers' teams and Pokemons. 
Now this document isn't always in order of the trainers you fight, so sometimes I'll have to scout ahead to see what trainer's coming up next before I can actually prep for it. This cost me an untimely demise. Fuck. Oh shit. Oh shit. I'm gonna fucking wipe. I didn't heal my Pokemon. Oh f I'm screwed. I did- Oh shit. One sec, let me turn off the music. So yes, here I did indeed have a wipe. I went into a battle unprepared and it cost me the run. Usually I would restart, just like I did when I restarted the first attempt, but I was already two weeks into this attempt, and with the sponsorship on the line, I simply did not have the time to restart. So after ending the stream, I made the decision to continue on this run without restarting. So just keep in mind that from this point on, this run is no longer valid. Now of course that doesn't mean there's no punishment, so all the Pokemon that I've died in that fight are no longer usable. Well now that that's happened, it brings us to the 8th gym leader. Having lost so many good Pokemon, the plan for Iris seemed a little sketchy. Iris is an extremely difficult fight. She's less of a dragon trainer and more of a pseudo-legendary trainer. She also fights you in a triple battle, which as we all know, is super hard to navigate. Boy Scarf Dragon Rush, Ice Fang, and Ice Beam into Salamence. Salamence is Yachi Berry, so we're gonna need two attacks. This should kill. Nice, okay. Brave Bird? Fuck. I didn't see that there. Nice. After the Metagross? Are we speed tied? I guess Gyarados is kind of slow. We can probably kill the Blastoise, but we definitely need to switch for the Dragonite. This can kill, just don't miss. Uh, it's probably Thunder Punch, right? So let's go here, and let's Ice Beam. Ideally, the Thunder Punch does enough to Altaria so that the Dragonite sees another kill, like uh, sees a kill into Altaria again. That's good. Blastoise out. Go for Earthquake. Damn. Okay. Meteor match. That's odd. Kingdra. This Kingdra might be Swift Swim. It says it says Sniper in my docks, but it's often been wrong. And there's no way that they're pairing up a Drizzle Blastoise with a Sniper Kingdra. So I'm gonna switch and Ice Beam. What? Why? Okay. This is odd. Because the, the Kingdra can do anything. It can Draco Meteor the Altaria, or it can Scald the Tyranitar. I think I, I think we just protect here, and to play it safe, we sack Altaria. I don't see myself using it anymore, so I'll sack Altaria. It can really do- yeah, okay, that's what I thought. I don't mind. Wait, I'm Scarfed. Fuck, I just threw away out I just threw away out Altaria for nothing. <laughs> I'm scar ah oh, shit, whatever. Yeah. I'm scarfed. I threw away Altaria for nothing. That was a mistake. Well You do what you have to do. After defeating Charon in a final difficult double battle, we catch our final encounters and we make it to the Pokemon League. The Elite Four in this game goes hard. They are only single battles, but finding 6 Pokemon that can counter all 24 of theirs is quite difficult, especially after losing all those Pokemon in the Opelousa Gym. The plan that I come up with is quite nutty, and the team that's going in looks quite terrible, especially considering that the average IV spread on all of my Pokemon is quite low. Here we go. 
here we freaking go. The AI, the AI in this game has been extremely... I, I, I just don't like it. It's not random, but it's also not predictable. But it's still super difficult. Uh, Fan attack should never kill me. We're going to set up Tailwind so that Heracross in the back should be able to kill some of his members. Uh, this is Technician with Focus Sash, so we have to hit it like this. Uh, Rock Blast a kill. We still have Tailwind up. Tailwind is five turns, I think. So... It might be four turns, because, like, it can't, like, I don't know how the turn, like, that we switch counts. I don't know how that works. It's fine. It, it's fine. I'll, I'll work this out. We're always faster. Okay. Titar definitely sees a rock slide, a uh, stone edge kill. Um, I think we're still faster with uh, Gyarados, though. Nice kill. This is gonna kill, right? Nice. And Muck goes down. But Grimsley's the easiest. Not much to be proud of here. Yeah, Grimsley's by far the easiest. Alright, so the big problem on Caitlyn's team is the first Drowsy. So, it's Eviolite, and it's super defensive, and we're gonna need to come up with some, like, super, super crazy BS to beat it. So, we gave Pidgeot no item, and we're gonna Thief its, it's Eviolite. So now it has no Eviolite. Hopefully, this will allow us to kill it. Ideally, we switch in uh, Heracross when our Pokemon is sleeping, but I don't want to switch it into a Mist Ball, so we'll do this first. I think this is a range to heal. Whenever it's around like 60%, 65%, it goes for heal. Yeah, the AI is super weird. It, it's, it's not consistent. Sometimes it's 65, sometimes it doesn't heal at all. Is that about a fifth? Okay, okay, okay. One in three chance to crit on any given hit is pretty nice. Okay, here's the Jinx. Um, we're Choice Scarf, so we're locked in, but I think we're faster. The problem is going to come from the Glade and the Snorlax. But please send Alakazam now. Please send Alakazam now. It's also got Fire Punch, but that can't really do anything. Ooh, I forgot Rock Smash. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay, not too bad. Yeah, I mean, Tyranitar, Battle Armor, Tyranitar specifically. Yeah, you, you can't, you can't go wrong. You can't go wrong. This is absolutely gonna be. Oh shit! I think Gyarados is the easy answer. This is Scope Lens, too. Yeah, that's probably why. Uh, this is gonna kill, though. This is guaranteed kill. The Lade's only 65 defense, which is kinda ass. <sighs> okay, little scuff there. Sorry, kind of had to play into the Psychic and the Alkazam, but other than that, I think that was okay. 
Marshall should be pretty straightforward. From a sand, but like it, it's not that big of a deal. Or I, I say that, but like I'm not too sure of myself. So this is Rindoberry, uh, Swampert, not Swift Swim yet because it's Sandstorm. Uh, Bullet Seed, a uh, Rindoberry only blocks the first hit of Bullet Seed, so this is blocked, but not the rest. Okay. So now does this kill? Okay, easy. And then we're also able to kill the Creedilly, Pingler, and that's it. I, I think that's it. But like half the team with just Heracross is pretty good. Well, Earth Power never kills us, and two Earthquakes should do the trick. This should never kill us. Could never kill us. And I forgot to protect. Okay, solid. Uh, I suspect Kingler is next. It's random move between Waterfall, Meteor Mash, and Rock Smash. Do I have anyone that can take all of those moves? Uh, actually, <laughs> yes I do. The only move that Kingler does not see a kill on Tyranitar is the only move that can kill uh, Pidgeot. Dude, no guard Pidgeot, way too good. Way too good. Felix. Okay, took a while, but we got it. Last is Flygon. Man, I hate Flygons. Free Dilly, you're gone. Goodbye. You're you don't really do anything for his team, honestly. That's three out of four down. Last one to go. One last Elite Four to finish. Alright. Chantal. By far, the hardest Elite Four. I don't know what Suicu did with Ghost types, but they have no weaknesses. I'll take that. I'll take that. Honestly, that Sableye is a defensive beast. So yeah, there's no, there was no other way I could take that out. You know what? Why is the Zangus here? Why is there a Zangus here? Zangus is not a ghost type. CC. How much? How much damage is this? Can't be that much, right? Yeah, because we're bug type. Perfect. That brings it in perfect range to die to. I think I'll Rock Blast here, because at least Rock Blast, I can use it onto other Pokemon, because we're Scarfed. And I don't want to lock myself into Arm Thrust. Four. Does this kill? Shit. Uh, what's left? Hecleon Gengar. Gengar. This is Shadow Ball, Dark Pulse, Thunderbolt, or a Sphere. I, ha I think I have to sack somebody to s to get that switch into Cacturn. So Needle King Earthquake works. So does Cacturn Sucker Punch. But I value Cacturn Sucker Punch more because there's another Gengar in uh, Getsis. And I also value Pidgeot. I think I have to sack Needle King here. Because I, I just die otherwise. Nidu King, you did well. Fear Force is a beast on you. So thank you for your service. 
And then what's his last Pokemon? Kecleon. Okay. Okay. Two deaths in, in all the Elite Four? I feel okay about that. I feel okay about that. Ideally, we would have just lost no Pokemon. Heracross there was just unlucky, but the sack was necessary. So losing Heracross there really did suck. Okay. I got this. I got this. So. Venusaur. Uh, we have to start with Cacturin because Cacturin needs to start against a Gengar for Getsis. So Sludge Bomb into you, we can just simply go to uh, Salamence and we should kill. We are Yachi Berry to prevent uh, any ice moves to come in. To come in. Um, this is going to be Draco Meteor. Uh, my plan was this. This should do about a third of damage. Of course. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? Technically, we still live a non-crit. So, I think I'm just gonna go for the Mirror Coat. Just don't crit us. Okay. And this should kill, right? Yeah. It did like 160, I think? Perfect. The problem is now it's baiting random move. It's probably not Belly Drum. This is a Belly Drum Linoon with Guts. I feel like the answer for this guy is here, just because of extreme speed. If there was no extreme speed, I'd use Sharpedo. Please kill. No. It's fine. We don't take that much damage anyway, so it doesn't matter. It's just that we might need to use this for the Magmar. Oh, sorry, ditto. Okay. Here's the Magmar. Fuck. <laughs> okay, we take the Focus Blast. Um... Why? How much damage is this? I've, I haven't calc this far yet because... AI is too unpredictable to, like, predictably send in a Pokémon. Hit. Clutch. Clutch. Come on, live, 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 live. Clutch. Holy cow. Salamence, you clutched. You clutched. Uh, this is Air Slash. This only has Air Slash and as, as an attacking move. Nice. Alright. What's your last Pokemon? <laughs> of course. Solid. Nice, nice, nice. We're not done yet. Alright guys, we're not done yet. There's still one more battle. Last fight, and then we win. We're not done yet. Okay, so the reason we, we led with, with Cacturn, okay? All we need to do is Sucker Punch twice, we just need to be able to take a hit. That's one. Brings it down to Focus Sash. That's twice. Perfect. Armaldo, uh... Probably a bug move. Um... Do I bother saving you? My counter for Armaldo is Blaziken, right? And Blaziken doesn't really take that much damage. I might as well. I might as well. 
so. Right, yeah. Here's the Mega Horn. Doesn't do that much damage. That's close combat, because we don't take recoil. Hoist Band could be able to kill. Perfect. Gyarados. Um, this is random move between Brave Bird and Aqua Tail. And Earthquake. And Dragon Dance. Uh, we do take a crit. Doesn't mean I want a crit, though. Perfect. Who does this bring in? Rayquaza already. Uh, I don't think it's worth saving you, then. See you, Wobble Pet. You've been you've done well. You've done well. Uh, let's go here. Protect to outspeed. Simple. Okay. What's next? Doug Trio? Metagross. I think here we just Surf and just Sack you, so that we can go for uh, Blaziken. Nice. Alright. See a Sharpedo. Never thought I'd bring you on a team. Actually, let's go here and let's go Flamethrower. Okay. Last Pokemon Doug Trio. 